Hello, good evening. Thanks for joining us. San Diego Mayor Bob Filner says he needs help and is going to get it. Today, the mayor released a video statement apologizing to San Diego. It comes a day after KPBS first broke the story of some of his top supporters calling for his resignation, accusing him of sexually harassing women. We begin with the mayor's video statement in its entirety. I begin today by apologizing to you. I have diminished the office to which you elected me. The charges made at today's news conference are serious. When a friend like Donna Fry is compelled to call for my resignation, I'm clearly doing something wrong. And I've reached into my heart and soul and realized I must and will change my behavior. As someone who has spent a lifetime fighting for equality for all people, I am embarrassed to admit that I have failed to fully respect the women who work for me and with me, and that at times I have intimidated them. It's a good thing that behavior that would have been tolerated in the past is being called out in this generation for what it is, inappropriate and wrong. I am also humbled to admit that I need help. I have begun to work with professionals to make changes in my behavior and approach. In addition, my staff and I will participate in sexual harassment training provided by the city. Please know that I fully understand that only I am the one that can make these changes. If my behavior doesn't change, I cannot succeed in leading our city. In the next few days, I will be reaching out to those who now work in the mayor's office or have previously worked for me, both men and women, to personally apologize for my behavior. I will also be announcing fundamental changes within the mayor's office designed to promote a new spirit of cooperation, respect, and effectiveness. You have every right to be disappointed in me. I only ask that you give me an opportunity to prove I am capable of change so that the vision I have for our city's future can be realized. Thank you. Mayor Bob Filner apologizing and saying he needs help, but not offering to resign. Filner's statement came hours after a news conference by some of his most prominent supporters, all of them calling on him to step down. KPBS Metro reporter Sandy Dirks has been following the story. So break it down for us, Sandia. What does this all mean? Well, as you just heard, the mayor says he is taking these accusations very seriously. And he fessed up. I mean, he did admit he has had intimidated and disrespected women in his office. But he came just short of owning up to being a sexual aggressor in the way he's been accused of. And he's pushing the rehabilitation narrative, saying that he needs help, saying he will see a therapist, and asking the people of San Diego to give him a chance to change. And he also uh, declined to step down. Yes, and, and that is in spite of calls for his resignation rising to a clamor. I mean, even some progressive supporters are saying it's time to go. Uh, former Filner staffer and city council person and longtime prominent progressive Donna Fry was at a press conference today. She told reporters she's talked to these women and she was really emotional, at times holding back tears. When I received credible first-hand evidence of more than one woman being sexually harassed, I could not not act. I believe what they have told me, and they need to know that they are not alone. There are people who support and care about them. I did not make this request lightly, and it is one of the hardest decisions I have ever made. Fry was with progressive lawyers Marco Gonzalez and Corey Briggs, who are also getting behind, uh, they're behind getting these accusations out. They are all being very tight-lipped. At this point, all we know is hearsay. We don't know how many women have confided in them. We don't know what happened. We don't even know what kind of abuse this was. The mayor has admitted he messed up. But will this be enough to satisfy the women who he hurt? Donna Fry seemed to suggest the alleged abuse may be too heinous to be satisfied with counseling and an I'm sorry. Marco Gonzalez, who is representing these women, says he is consulting with clients. And he says he will issue a response tomorrow. So stay tuned. KPBS Metro reporter, Sandy Dirks. Now Peggy Pico continues our coverage with an in-depth look at the mayor's apology and how it impacts City Hall. Mayor Bob Filner was sworn into office back in December. Since then, accusations of abrasive, arrogant, and possibly corrupt behavior have been widely publicized. He's never apologized until this afternoon for sexual harassment. 
I am embarrassed to admit that I have failed to fully respect the women who work for me and with me, and that at times I have intimidated them. Here to help put this apology into context is political science professor Carl Luna. And Carl, welcome back. Good to be here. Okay, so he admits, openly admits, I did this, he apologizes. What does this mean legally uh, for him? Well, this could open up the whole can of worms of litigation, you know, sexual harassment lawsuits against him, against the city, and that's going to be a serious distraction coming down the pike. And politically, now the question is whether or not an apology will keep him in office. Absolutely, and we're going to come back to that. But first I want to talk about, um, he has said, I'm going to get help. I need to get help. So if you go to rehab and you get help, and you, or if these lawsuits are going down, what happens to his ability to manage the city? How does he do that? Well, it becomes more problematic. I mean, the city council can become more assertive. There's the city attorney. The mayor's not going to be as engaged, and he's going to be damaged politically to push through any agenda of his own. I have a hard time seeing how he can function effectively as mayor through this whole process. Well, one thing he didn't say was that he was going to resign, which was what the uh, original uh, calls for his resignation, of course, were saying, right. please resign over this. Um, if he doesn't resign, is that more likely that there will be a recall? Oh, people have been talking about a recall for a variety of lesser charges uh, for the last several months. His opponents will seize on it, but now a lot of his supporters are going to say, this is a distraction, we need to move on. But a recall process sub submits the city to up to six months of petitions and filings and election. Uh, it would be extremely disruptive to the governance of the, of it's, the city. It's, it's six months and you have well, to get 100,000 signatures. You know, well, you're looking at 90 days of the process of just getting the signatures in and calling for the election and up to another 90 days afterwards, it would be a mess. What happens if he does change his mind over the weekend and resigns? Well, that may be the, the gentlest solution to all of this. You end up with the council president, Mr. Gloria, governing until a recall, until a, a special election is called, and then it'll still be a couple of months before the ship of state's back on course. So no matter how this goes, there's going to be a lot of upheaval. There, there's disruption, but we're now in the thick of the storm. We don't know what direction we're going with, bad or worse. Uh, this clearly has become national news. Uh, San Diego has become, you know, on the national boilerplate once yeah, again. We used to be known for our beaches and sunshine. Now it's fiscal malfeasance and uh, scandal, unfortunately. So in the political arena then, um, let's say that there is a special election and what's going to happen as far as who, who do you think might be up for mayor during that time? Well, Councilman Kevin Faulkner would be an obvious choice to run. Uh, uh, Nathan Fletcher, who's now out of politics but is a Democrat, could come back in, and I, I, he'd be the odds-on favorite to me. I don't think. Uh, why would it, why would he be the odds-on favorite? Because he was very popular with a good section in the middle ground. A lot of business interests supported him after the fact and said maybe we made a mistake with going to Carl DeMaio. I think he would have a better chance running, and I don't think Carl DeMaio will give up a bid for Congress for a second pass at the mayorship. And I wanted to talk to you about that because one reason he wouldn't is because he lost already the first time, so he'd be running again right. against uh, Peters. Uh, maybe or, or if he'd be running, he'd have a chance against. Scott Peters in that district, the way it breaks. If Nathan Fletcher is another candidate, I think he'd have a harder time against Nathan Fletcher. And you lose twice for mayor. You know, if Nixon could come back from a couple of defeats like that, I don't think Carl DeMeo could as easily. What do you think about, um, we've got the weekend, you know, coming up. Do you think we'll hear from the mayor before then, and what do you anticipate on Monday? His hope is this all goes away, but I do not think it's going to. I think over the weekend he's going to find his support base is dried up, and come Monday he's going to be given that choice, be a statesman and, and resign, or it's going to be an ongoing, grueling process. He could end up going all Richard Nixon on this, and I don't think that would be a good way for the city to go. But historically, he has fought everything. He is tenacious, let us say. All right. Political professor uh, Carl Luna, thank you so much for your insight on this. Thank you. Two city council members have now joined the calls for Filner's resignation. Scott Sherman says, quote, Filner's actions are unacceptable under any circumstance. Unfortunately, this is the latest and most disturbing of a series of scandals that make him incapable of leading our city, end quote. And Councilman David Alvarez says, quote, it is clear to me that the mayor's behavior must change. If it does not change, then he should resign. The sexual harassment accusations came two days after Filner's engagement fell apart. His ex fiance says she's sad and disappointed about the allegations. Amitha Sharma talked with her uh, today in Los Angeles. Amitha is joining us by phone. Uh, Bronwyn Ingram broke up with the mayor, Amitha, this week, just days before sexual harassment allegations publicly surfaced. Was the breakup connected 
to this at all? Well, Dwayne Bronwyn said there was no connection between the demise of her romantic relationship with Mayor Bob Filner and the sexual harassment accusations. Bronwyn says she feels tremendous sadness and disappointment over the events of this week. She said she knows former San Diego Councilwoman Donna Fry well and has a lot of respect for her. When I asked her whether she agrees with Fry's call for Filner to resign because of the sexual harassment allegations, she said she'd like to quote, just leave it there. Despite dating the mayor for four years, Bronwyn maintains she did not know about the sexual harassment accusations. She said people simply did not come to her with this stuff. Stories have also circulated for months that the mayor had been seeing other women. Even though he was engaged to Bronwyn, she declined to comment about whether the mayor had cheated on her, Dwayne. KPBS investigative reporter Mitha Sharma with the exclusive interview today with the mayor's ex fiance Now, earlier we told you about a news conference held by Donna Fry and two progressive attorneys who've called on the mayor to resign. One of those attorneys, Corey Briggs, has filed a lawsuit over another controversy. This one involves a Sun Road project in Kearney Mesa. Briggs is suing Sun Road Enterprises and the city, claiming there was a deal, $100,000, for some of Filner's pet projects in exchange for an easement from a public park. While the Department of Justice is reportedly looking into the mayor's involvement, Briggs says the focus shouldn't just be on the mayor. You have to remember that eight council members unanim unanimously voted for that giveaway, despite some of them being up on the dais and being critical of the mayor over the $100,000. Yet they still voted to give away public park property. That's unconscionable, and unfortunately, it's symptomatic of what goes on at City Hall far too often. The lawsuit claims approval of the project was illegal because the city didn't follow proper procedures. Of course, you can find much more about this story on our website, including the mayor's statement and letters from Donna Fry, attorneys Corey Briggs, and attorney Marco Gonzalez. They're all posted at kpbs.org.